Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. With the migration from rural areas to urban areas an international phenomenon, India has also seen similar movement for several years now. It is expected that by 2050, 70% of the population will be living in cities. It is said that this would mean that around 500 new cities will be needed to accommodate this bourgeoning population in urban areas. The NDA government which came to power last year had promised that it would set up 100 smart cities across the country. Yesterday, the union cabinet approved the smart cities mission and allocated rupees 48,000 crores. It also renamed the Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission, started by the UPA government and named it Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation, Amrut, for which rupees 50,000 crores has been allocated. The two missions combined is expected to improve the quality of life in urban areas and create better and sustainable cities. Today we will look at the concept of the smart cities, how and what will make them and how it would reshape the urban landscape in the country and also what are the problems and stumbling blocks that may be encountered in creating these smart cities. To discuss this I have with me an eminent panel of guests, Ajay Shankar, former Secretary, Department of Planning and Promotion, Government of India and also someone who was the former CEO of Greater Noida, one of the best cities in India, Sudhir Krishna, former Secretary, Urban Development, Government of India, Jamal H. Ansari, Town and Country Planner and former Director, School of Planning and Architecture, Milap Punya, Professor at the Study of Regional Development, JNU, and Nitin Sethi, Associate Editor, Business Standard. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Sudhir Krishna, what is your concept of a smart city? I would say that a smart city should be a livable city, enjoyable city, and safe city. And uh, livable in the sense that we should not be Residents should not be worrying too much about water supply, safe water, electricity supply should be regular, city should be clean, bus facilities, transport facilities should be good, walkability should be there. Such, a, such are the parameters for smart cities and that are all achievable. Oh, see, when we are talking of smart cities or when we, have, you know, when we started hearing of these smart cities, everybody thought that it is going to be some technologically very advanced kind of a city. Is that something what is, what is being Yeah, uh, actually that, that concept of a smart city with IT focus is also there, but that has come from the West. We are the basic needs what I mentioned before, like clean city, like good water supply, like electricity supply, like good walkways, it's all there already. And therefore they are talking of a smart city as highly IT enabled city. Right. Now for us, if the garbage is all over strewn around <laughs> and then you talk of, you know, IT enabled everything, so it, I mean, doesn't work out very well. So it, it has to have IT. I'm not saying it is not required. You require IT to manage even the, you know, waste. You require IT to manage water supply and so on and so forth. But then that is the only means. Fundamentally, we have to work on livable, clean cities and then top it up with IT services, in IT enabled services. Mr. Ajay Shankar? Is that the way you would look at it also? I entirely agree with him because... And, and, and can, you, you, can you give us examples of any of the any cities in India which, which uh, you know, how, what, what Sudhir Krishna has described? No, our best example is the new city of Chandigarh when we built it. Yes. It was an extraordinarily smart city. It was a green city. So, I mean, I'm not taking name of... Uh, you, 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 don't want to take the, the, you don't want to take the great name of great, great, Greater Noida, but I will take it because, you know, so, I, according to me, it's still it's one of the best cities in India. So Chandigarh live, was our and model. I, I, and I live there. So Chandigarh was our model. <laughs> so, the first need of any citizen is the basics. Why should I have to buy drinking water? Right. Why do I need to install a water purifier in my home? Why do I have to have an inverter in my home? So those are the basic needs. Why do I see garbage all over the city? Right. So those are the basics that have to be done. But as Sudhir has rightly said, that if you use IT as the power of technology, these things can be done better and more efficiently and at lower cost. So the idea of smart city is to combine the strength of technology to give us the most cost-effective solutions. And one good part of the new initiative is that a lot of decentralization is envisaged in the sense the cities are supposed to come up with their own plans, plans. of what is it that they want to do. So that's a great positive. That, that's, that's the only positive you see? No, no. The real positive, according to me, is that government and society and the political leadership is recognizing the importance of cities for economic development, for economic growth, and for shifting people from rural areas to urban areas. Because that has been the way of modernization and development in all industrializing all, all societies. 
we have been very late in recognizing the importance of subsidies as engines of growth. Mr. Mr. Ansari, Mr. Ansari, you know, when we are talking of the smart cities or when the government is now, the cabinet has approved it, still we are not very clear about what the government has in its mind, though we are, we are reading reports about, you know, here and there. Now, are these cities going to be new cities or, the, or do you think that the old cities can be converted into smart cities? Yeah, actually, uh, that is the confusion which sort of persists because when we started, we thought these 100 cities will be entirely new cities. Right. But as the time has passed by during the last one year, the idea seems to be growing that no, all of them would not be new cities. I think the consensus is getting around the idea 50% of them would be new cities and 50% of them would be existing cities which would perhaps be converted into a smart city. Now, if we take the new cities, I think the earlier idea, I think very valid idea was that these new cities would be planned around large metropolitan cities as their satellites so that the pressure of population on those metropolitan cities can somehow be reduced. And also, I also supported that idea because I thought by doing that, what we can do is that we can locate the new cities in such places where the land is not fertile, relatively less fertile, and where it is possible to supply water more easily. So I think that is an idea if pursued, that will be a very good idea. Now, if we come to the idea of existing cities being converted into smart cities, there are many problems. Problems are that how do we choose which cities we are going to make them smart? Because when the whole thing goes through a political process, every state would like to have its share of smart cities. Absolutely. And that means finances. So that is one problem which we are going to face. In fact, we, in fact, uh, sorry to intervene, in fact, uh, on a lighter note, the Urban Development Minister, Mr. Venkai Naidu's favorite, uh, you know, f favorite words now is that, you know, he is being besieged by every MP, all the 545 MPs saying that, you know, please give us a smart city. <laughs> Course, every, every MP wants a smart city now. So, you know, th 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 that's a practical problem which you faced. Sorry, sorry, you ca please carry on. Yeah, and the other problem is then is that there will be finances which will be required to make them, convert them into smart cities. Now, the other day I was hearing that the Ministry of Urban Development has somehow finalized few criteria on the basis of which these smart cities will be chosen, which will be made more smart. Now, there the basic criteria is perhaps that those cities which have already shown some strength, who have shown the capability of becoming smart, which cities which have shown certain examples of doing uh, infrastructure development through self-financing schemes, right. they will be given a priority for being selected as smart cities. The problem with that kind of a criteria is that then we are going to end up building smart cities only in states which are already far developed. And therefore, we will be ignoring those cities which require these smart cities, Absolutely. not only for the purpose of cities, but becoming developed. I, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Mr. Sudhir Krishna. Would you like to respond to that? Yeah. No, yesterday's, after the yesterday's ca cabinet meeting, we were told that there's going to be a competition between different states and, you know, they will have to come up with some kind of uh, a plan and then it will be, you know, cities will be chosen from them. You know, this, the danger what uh, has been mentioned is absolutely right. That uh, the statistically speaking, the, the states that are less urbanized are poorer also. Right. In terms of per capita GSDP, the correlation is very high. Almost as high as 0.8 or something like that, 0.7 points, very high correlation. Bihar, Jharkhand and uh, uh, other such states that are very poorly urbanized. Chhattisgarh, yes, Orissa. Yes, even Uttar Pradesh also. Yes. Per capita income is low, urbanization levels are also low. So therefore, and, in, and these states have been also poor in partaking in GNNURM funds also. Right. So look at the correlation. Right. Urbanization, then the per capita income and capacity to absorb funds for urbanization. Absolutely. Plan. So therefore the solution lies in the states coming up to the mark. The states have to struggle now. No more the government of India funds will be just, funds are there and you take it. They have to work hard. They have to, they have to, yes. they, they have to generate their own funds. Not only, no, no, not only fund, they have to generate their capacity and will, willpower. To absorb funds. To also. improve things. Improve. And in the process, get funds also. Okay, Mila, uh, um, Prasam Punya. 
how do you look at this? Do you think that you know creating hundred new smart cities, which are you know from, from out of out of nowhere, is better or or to you know existing cities convert them into how, how easy is that? I think coming back to uh, some of my co-panelists and uh, how smart are the cities? Yeah, the first point they? is this. We need to see what would be the and yard. what state. is a smart city? Exactly. Yes. So I think that process still we have not uh, gone through. We need to see how exactly the smart cities are right now and how much more smartness we have to add into exactly. it. Exactly. And uh, cities making smarter by way of uh, improving them by morphologically putting infrastructure into place. That is the hardware component of the city. But we also need to uh, keep in mind that we all talking about the people, that the software of the city. Yes. How does the software of the city does work? Does it caters the needs of the aspiration of the people, especially the employment? And uh, although one of the neglected area that uh, we, have, we are also talking about is the governance issue. Right. Do we have a manpower capacity to absorb these funds and to utilize them properly? So it, it's not only having a city that is uh, livable from from environment point of view, clean from from the air point of view, but it, we also need to see that it is socio ecologically as well as politically livable, and it gives an ample space for everyone <coughs> to have their own rights. I think we need we we, we cannot copy uh, some some issues or some of the uh, models Western, which are Western there in, in Europe. Them. Like Europe has a pan smart city kind of model, right? And and US also has the same kind of. Where in 1980s, I think Jan Jacob she talked about rejuvenation, and I think we are also going through the same phase where we are talking about urban first, rural can wait. Right. You know. So, but, but the concept is that people are going to move from rural areas, so prepare them for that. Yeah, but you also need to take into, does your smart cities will be having the fence around? Your, your hinterland, your catchment is also the uh, rural area. Right. So we need to keep into that thing also into mind. So that is, I think, we, we still need to go uh, quite far. Still I mean, the concept of a smart city is not clear. That's right. what he's, he's trying to say? Yeah, I think, uh, it's, it, my point is it's not only hardware, it's also about the people, the about software the people. of the city. How much? Like yeah, yes, Mr. Ansari. Yeah, the, is this idea of a smart city, one of the best definitions I had recently was that a smart city is one which uses its resources smartly. I would like to add on top of that, I would say a smart city is one which takes care of its poor people smartly. Ah, because that is the dimension absolutely. which has always been missing and will be missing if we don't take care of that particular aspect. Inclusive city is the city which we want, absolutely. whether we call it smart city or not. Okay. Nitin? I'll come to you, Mr. Krishna. And Nitin, Nitin, uh, w do you think that the, 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 sure. there is a clarity of the con uh, as far as the concept is concerned? It's been a, almost a year since this government came to power. It came on the promise that it will create these 100 smart cities. I'm sure in the last one year, a lot of work must have gone into it. Do you see that, that clarity in the government now? I think I do see clarity and the clarity I see in this government is that it's copy pasted a lot of stuff that was ex existing in the previous government's book of good things to be done. So they called it smart growth, this, this government calls it smart cities, they had the same issues about creating local urban bodies and a cadre of local urban officers, this government asked for the same. The previous government was looking at almost the same things, almost the same share of ratios of expenditure, almost the same kind of reforms. It wanted these funding to be conditional or upon the states achieving those targets, the same kind of investment to be brought in from the PPP mode and from other financial tools. In that sense, it's it's been smart in sense it's repackaged what was existing and hopefully is packaged it bigger. Now the question really is for me and I think for all the panelists is, 1 lakh crore looks very nice over 5 years, but if you look at it, that is going to be spent over 600 cities, so to say. How much does it really end up being? Consider the fact that one large bus, if you want to buy in Delhi at the moment, costs anything between 50 to 75 lakh rupees or a crore. Now, how much can you really do with 100 crores a year for one city? What are you really trying to generate? Even if you're saying it's a multiplier effect and you will get greater investments from private sector, we all know that the private sector right now is facing a, a problem that it can't really invest. It's actually looking to the government to invest upfront and then to bail it out over a period. The PPP model has failed so far. 
So the dependence on a PPP model and dependence on the urban local bodies to generate funds on their own in a in a ratio which has been untenable so far under the circumstances, I don't know where it's going to go. Two, I think when we talk about smart cities, as most co-panelists of mine have said, we are talking about really just livable cities. But the question we must ask is, who is it livable for? The fact that in the last seven, eight years, 15 million construction workers were added as new em employment generation under the last government. The fact is you're going to have a lot of forced migration, a lot of poor people coming to cities, not with skills. Now, where is the provision for them in these cities? Are we, in some sense, just generating cities for the middle class? And there is a large number of that as well. But if you were really looking at livable cities, you need to create spaces for all of them. Absolutely. Really, as, the funds don't exist at the right, moment. Right, Mr. As Mr. Ansari rightly said, inclusive cities. Mr. Shankar, how do you react to all this? No, I think the challenges of success in smart cities are enormous. And I think we need to recognize the enormity of the challenge. The foremost challenge is finances. And clearly this amount of money... 100 is, crores per year is a pittance. So it needs to be multiplied manyfold. Manyfold. But the fact of the matter is that urbanization leads to wealth creation of a kind which should allow you to finance all of this. Historically, even if you look at India, the Delhi Development Authority is sitting on hard cash of thousands of crores after having done so much. So the land values rise, economic activity generates wealth. So it's a question of getting the cities to do the upfront investment and be able to service that investment through wealth creation, through better economic activity. Now that we have not done well in India yet. So that's a huge challenge. Why have we not done that? Because we have not looked at cities as engines of growth. Okay. The second enormous challenge. I'll come to you, sir. The second enormous challenge Please, is if I might this come in. issue I'll, I'll, of one issue second. Of Nitin, let me finish. I'll come to you. In, issue of inclusiveness, because we somehow presume sure. Sure. that we build cities where the poor don't need to live. So we create slums through the way we develop cities. Now we encourage uh, creation of development. So we we of don't slums. create living spaces for the working Absolutely. poor. So where do they go? And we can't live without them. So that is going to be a huge challenge because the way the land markets are working. We have to see this as a major problem. Mr. Mr. The third, the no, th third, one yes. third issue is that the hardcore capacity to grapple with the complex issues of a smart city and to design projects and to deliver them is non-existent, practically non-existent. So we need a huge managerial revolution to be able to achieve what we want. I, I'll come to you, but one que I have one question. You were talking about the issue of, you know, the poor... Not, not being taken into account at all in our urban planning processes. Mm. You, were a CEO, you were the CEO of Greater Noida. Mm. Was, this, was this element included in, the, in, 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 in that? Or how far you were successful in that at all? You see, I'll put it like this, that in the days where state-led urban development, then the state used to provide LIG, EWS housing. Right. When the state retreated and left it to the market, the market doesn't find market it worth its while right. to invest for LIG EWS housing. So the urban development permission stipulates some 30% earmarking, but that is fiction. So unless the state is to, able to grapple creatively with this problem and come to the conclusion that cities without the working population don't e cannot, succeed. Cannot, cannot succeed. Historically, you know, council housing was done, dormitories were built, all kinds of things have been done by other countries. So we need to create workspaces for the working poor. Only then will the city be smart and will it succeed. Absolutely. Uh, yes, Nitin, you wanted to get in? Yeah, I wanted to, I mean, just pose it to the panel as well as and put it to you and our audience. Is If you look at what the High Part Committee just before this government came out with the cabinet decision really suggested, it said we need a minimum of 7 lakh crores to begin with, topping it up with a multiplier effect from the private investment, from the urban local bodies, generating funds through different kinds of uh, financial tools. What we now come down to is roughly 1 lakh crores for six, 600 cities. Now, it, it sounds very nice and it's, it's part of the government's um, manifesto, therefore it's on the table. I would say it would have made sense to say, you know, why not look at 10 cities and create those 10 cities in the five-year period that we have before us. If you look at the history of JNNURM, this is exactly why it's fallen flat. You've had these sporadic programs spread across different cities, one sewage canal system set up somewhere, one augmentation of a water system somewhere. It's, it's, it needs to be done. It's an incremental game. It is not a big star game at be, the moment. It okay. really cannot, as everyone on the panel okay. is saying, 
you you can't create a singapore out of nothing okay mr sudhir vishnu say that um, no well, i want i have an, a question okay. also you think that creating new cities is better or to rejuvenate the existing ones as smart cities on this i would say that we have to focus on rejuvenating the existing cities because that is where life is you see the case of naya raipur huge investment has been made in naya raipur and still it is not lively it's still not vibrant it will take time and why to neglect old raipur what is the fault you see the case of uh, gandhi nagar versus ahmedabad ahmedabad you go to gandhi nagar so well designed but after sunset you feel like going to ahmedabad yes that is where life is yes and so on so forth of course navi, navi mumbai is a very good example of a vibrant new city but so we have to understand that old cities are where the life is and we cannot neglect our brothers and sisters who are living in the old cities we have to give them and they have lived there for you know generations that is one and secondly i would say that connectivity is fundamental which we have neglected why slums have come about because people are not able to go to Move. other places and live safely there Absolutely. so they prefer to congregate in the heart of the city closer to workplaces or closer to their workplaces yes. and thirdly i would say that the financing of a smart city need not be so much of a worry provided we have a framework clear in our mind for example <laughs> street lighting now there are large number we started a couple of years ago experiment of street lighting which pays for itself because if you switch over the exist traditional lighting with led lighting which is intelligent control then you save on the electricity consumption right and over a 7 year 5 year period you recover all the investment and thereafter you go on having savings so you're saying that the, the, the that the financial should not be such a major issue yes it is not a major to start issue. off with on the i am just trying to make a micro example out of the macro issue uh, suggested by uh, ajay shankar sahab where he said that cities create wealth right. and that is true if cities create wealth then where is the question of shortage of wealth to develop a city? it is a question of the beneficiaries of that wealth from them we should take some fund in terms of development charges in terms of user charges in terms of some fees which ultimately funds the city so, infrastructure uh, professor punya so you know the concept as mr anzari was pointing out and we are still not clear whether it's going to be new city is going to be developed or the existing ones are going to be uh, uh, you know invested in as smart, smart cities In, in 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 this let us assume that you know the existing cities will be the will be because from what we are reading that there's going to be a competition among the states they have to come out with their you know proposals and things like that the best ones will get the will will get to be selected as smart cities in that in that kind of a scenario how do you how do you how do you envisage the you know what what are the what are the ingredients necessary for that i think uh, uh, like uh, the direct question could be uh, which cities will be selected you know so uh, one could be like as uh, panelists as co panelists have just said that it would be like a retrofitting the existing cities exactly but they're talking of retrofitting yeah but how do you select them and and let's assume a situation retrofitting they're talking of four things retrofitting redevelopment pan city initiatives and development of new city they're right. talking of development of right. new cities now the moment when we talk about a new city so we need to visualize a scenario a region a but ecosystem but as mr krishna rightly pointed out naya raipur getting all the attention still people yeah, are not yeah i am coming back to that yeah i am coming back to that let's visualize a situation in a region that we need to put a city somewhere there is no network of accessibility and connectivity so how did that particular uh, it would be city will be surviving we need a a good ecosystem to mobilize the surplus into the region and finally that what accumulates the wealth into a particular a primate city so this is what is this is how a system works so we need to find out in spite of having a new cities it's better to look at the existing cities but we have another challenge in this particular decade we have added about 91 million people into the urban urban basket that amounts to 377 million people and as you said i'm not I'm, i'm i'm not that optimistic that we will be having 70% population by 2050 let's see by going the current growth rate we would be somewhere around say 40 or uh, around 40 40% areas would would be urbanized now coming to that out of 7000 urban areas which would we are going to select say class 1 towns that's amount about 500 and then you have another 100 cities that is 600 cities so i think that would be more of the retrofitting selecting and there would be competition as you said among the states they will be coming up with their own names and finally that will add into the 100 and then rest of the class 1 cities could uh, could be accommodated as a 500 cities I okay mr i'm sorry what has been the experience in in countries abroad can we take any 
can we take any 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 of these places as a role model do you think or or you think that india is in a special case we need to develop our own uh, model well of course i believe it, uh, very firmly that we must develop our own model by thinking fundamentally there is no point in looking at paris or shanghai or any other place we have got smart cities in our country Jaipur is a beautiful city. Udaipur is a beautiful city. There are so many of them we can take recourse to. The point is that when we do look at Paris, London, and New York, we get lost into those high-rise buildings, wide roads, fast-moving roads, and these cars and 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 trains, and we forget about our own fundamental problem. I think our problem is that if we can somehow. in a city increase water supply from 2 hours a day to 4 hours a day that reduce will reduce short uh, uh, power cutage from 8 hours to 4 hours that is a great sense of smartness i mean that is what we want and one point which i would like to ajay shank mr ajay shankar's response finance i don't think in india has been a challenge because so much of money allocated for different schemes remained unspent In fact, we have to learn the ability to spend the money. In fact, uh, Mr. Sudhir Krishna means. rightly pointed out, you know, municipalities, towns, you know, they, they, don't, they don't even have the capacity to absorb the funds which are given to them. Yes, even Jainu Aram. Jainu Aram. Jainu Aram is a classic <laughs> example. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to make two points. One is that given the need for development and given the need to create more productive jobs, I think we will see both. redevelopment of existing cities and their rapid expansion but we will also see the emergence of new cities yeah I the agree. whole industrial corridor project the delhi mumbai etc would lead and should lead to the creation of new industrial townships and i think uh, in, we, in these corridors itself uh, these uh, smart cities can be part of that they are planned yes. so about six smart cities are planned along the delhi mumbai industrial right. corridor the idea being that you take the old say steel township jamshedpur you build on that idea have an anchor investor and then create a whole metropolitan city around it because what india needs in the few decades is gigantic so that is one the other point which has not been made till now and i think it needs to be made that till we create a political system where political careers are to be made by being successful makers of smart cities we will not see the outcome we need as the, the country of germany has produced two chancellors who are mayors of city yes China Politburo membership. I don't know the details, but many people have made their name as developers of their new eastern coastal areas or Shanghai. So I think we need that shift in governance structures where political careers are to be made by demonstrating success, not at the state government level, but by making cities smart. Mr. Then we will get the full traction. Mr. Krishna, because final. civil servants alone cannot cannot do cannot smart, do this. Do smart Mr. Krishna, I have been a civil servant. The so. biggest stumbling block. The, I if, would if, say, if we have to think. Yes. Of. institutional labyrinth is the biggest institutional i mean biggest block in getting smart cities or making cities smarter i mean you would like to see the city being led by the municipality but municipality is just one of the numerous players yes. who are equally empowered and at time more empowered either financially or legally for example you have got development authority you have got environment authority you have got police authority you have got transport authority you have got urban uh, uh, arts authority and so on so forth it has to be a singular authority which is the nothing but municipality the, the multiplicity of authorities yes. can be one of the biggest challenges absolutely here. absolutely very quick last words sir yeah i think the biggest challenge would be uh, leveraging some more legislative powers to the decentralized planning at the city level point number 1 and then enhancing the capacity as well as the leadership that can strive to make the cities inclusive socially ecologically viable okay i think on that note we need to end we completely run out of time but it, it, it's an interesting discussion as we go along we'll, i'm sure you know there will be more and more clarity but also the problems which can be encountered will also need to be taken note of i think all my panelists have given enough for the government of the pla- and people who are going to be taking the taking up this this smart city mission to 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 think about thanks to all my guests please keep watching we'll come back with anandrush in the big picture same time tomorrow